Hi there. It took a few months, but I finally managed to make my first split keyboard, the Daisogen Fukahi, or in English, the Unavoidable Great Plains. The Daisogen Fukahi is a 42 key split keyboard with a 1 inch OLED screen on the left side of the split with a currently unusable 43mm Azotec trackpad on the right. It also has magnets to stick both halves together, is controlled by two RP2040 Zero controllers, a half acrylic frame, and a very narrow LED strip for RGB. For me, this was all the lulls that I needed in a keybob, hence why I named it Daisogen Fukahi. The design of this keybob is based off the chaba that I made before, which was based off the corne and taking a lot of inspiration from Proteus. Keeps modded Scotty Fly that came with the Azotac trackpad. So I started off with this design on paper way back in early September and included the main features of the keyboard, figure out how much it would cost to build the whole thing because I'll always remember that dude who said, why buy a mechanical keyboard when you can make one at three times the price? So anyway, I bought all my parts and once they arrived about two weeks later, I started to design the key in Fusion 360. It took another two weeks to finish everything because I really took my time designing one part at a time, like the holes for the magnets, where the split would be, how high the trackpad would be placed, the legs for the key, and some other things to consider. By early October, I had my design done and sent it to be 3D printed. Once the 3D print case arrived, I had to sand these down a bit for the GRS jacks and some other parts, but I still didn't have all my parts to assemble the key, especially the acrylic sheets because they're so expensive to cut everywhere. Since I wasn't going to get my parts so soon, I started to make a prototype of how the key would work. Uh, basically have two controls connected through TRS using half duplex UART connection because I don't have a resistor handy to do a full duplex zero connection. Uh, connect OLED on one side, the trackpad on the other, and RGB strips on both sides. To be honest, I had no idea if I was using the correct pins because I thought I could just assign them using firmware. Um, in fact, I still don't know what's correct or not, so I went YOLO with whatever I had. Making a first usable firmware took about 3 weeks. Firmware is probably my least favorite thing because I don't know how to debug QMK. Uh, compiling the firmware takes a few minutes for each try and the feeling of the firmware compiling but nothing working after flashing it to the key is just frustrating. I did ask around in QMK Discord for help but unfortunately I was just too new to understand what the solution was. So anyway, I got the OLED and trackpad to work independently as a standalone device but couldn't get them to work at the same time. I figured I'd just solve them some other time. So after getting a basic firmware working, I ordered my acrylic sheets through XCMKB and started building the keybob. For this build, I used Tossfox Voyager tactile switches. I did contemplate to go for a silent build, but I just wanted to build the thing, so there's that. So here's me soldering in the rows, melting in the inserts, putting in the magnets, doing the columns, wiring up the controller, gluing the TRS jacks, doing the RGB strip, and assembling the acrylic sheets and legs. So once everything is done, I slotted in some random cherry profile keycaps I bought off Tawa because their mods were cute, but unfortunately the legends are super fugly. It took me about a week plus to do this bit by bit, so probably 7-8 to eight hours in total. And then here comes the firmware troubleshooting part. I managed to make the keys work but for the life of me couldn't even get the OLED to turn on. It probably took me close to 2 weeks until I found out that the SEL and SDA pins work in pairs after looking at the controller pin out. So I swapped the SEL pin from 11 to 13, did some config edit and it turns on. Yay! I tried my luck at turning on the trackpad code but unfortunately it doesn't work and it turns off the OLED too. We'll probably tackle this some other day when the official support for this trackpad comes out for QMK. By the way, this is how I have my key connected and how I have the pins programmed, so any advice is helpful. Thanks. So, here's a typing test of the Daisogen Fukai. A few things I thought after this build was, the magnets weren't practical because there wasn't a strong pull and I had non-slip silicone pads as feet, not enough clearance for some parts so I had to sand them off, unbalanced edges because I didn't think of supporting pinky key presses, a bit too much of clack, and maybe over engineering a keybob isn't that good. But I'm happy that I have my OLED to look at it once in a while and I'm really looking forward to how I'll be using the trackpad when I get it working. Oh, and I love how the RGB looks like with a half acrylic frame. I'm a genius, I told you. As always, I've learned a lot from this build. A bit more tweaking and head cracking to get the trackpad working and I'll be happy then. Alright, uh, thanks for watching. Gosho, arigatou gozaimashita!